today on the TMZ Podcast. Taylor Swift has just dropped a Kim Kardashian diss track. She is reigniting their feud. It's the TMZ Podcast. I'm Wild Young here with Melanie Miller. Hello. Mel. Hi. Torture Poets Department. We love. The new Taylor Swift album is out. It's so good. The biggest shot on the album was that. Kim Kardashian. And she saved that for the 2 a.m. So she dropped a double album and mm -hmm. told no one. She didn't drop this until um, 11 a.m. or 11 p.m. Pacific Standard and then 2 a.m. Eastern Time. And so we didn't even know about this song. And the song title is Thank You, Amy. And guess what letters are capitalized? Which ones? The K, <gasps> the I, and the M. All right, so... I want to get into, well, you obviously just gave us a little bit, a tidbit of why we think the song is clearly about Kim. Because it says her name. Because it says her name kind of capitalized in the title. Yeah. Taylor took some shots in the song. Let's play a little bit of that now. All that time you were throwing punches, I was building something. And I can't forgive the way you made me feel. Scream, fuck you, Amy, to the night sky as the blood was gushing. So the more important part is that she calls her a, a spray tan bronze statue or spray tan statue. Um, oh, do you think that's like because Kim is kind of tan? Uh, yeah, tan. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that uh, that um, her mom, Taylor's mom, is a saint, but Andrea wanted her dead. She also says in the song, which I thought was like the biggest Kim line. She says in a sense that like one day your kids will be singing my songs, including this one, which is about you, but only you and I will know it's about you. And her kids do sing the song. Yeah, if you've been on TikTok, you know North and Kim. They have a TikTok account, and North often sings and dances to Taylor Swift songs. You know, my favorite part of the song is, is so. though, basically, she's like, for everything you've done to me, I've had to, like, pick myself up and carry on. Mm -hmm. And I've become better for it. And it's all in spite and maybe not thanks to you, but, like, if, if you didn't put, drag me to hell, I wouldn't be where I am. Mel, give us, like, a 30-second recap of the Kim Kardashian and Taylor Swift feud. Why are they feuding? Why were they ever mad at each other? Tell us. So Kanye West took Taylor Swift's microphone at the VMAs and mm -hmm. said uh, Beyonce had the best video of all time. Yes. Um, and then Kim Kanye started dating Kim Kardashian. Kanye wanted to bury the feud. They became friends. Kim Kanye called Kim. Mm -hmm. Kim recorded the phone call, um, left out, cut out the part where... Um, T Kanye never told Taylor that he was going to call her that bitch in the song. Famous. Just wanted her to basically tweet out about the song, and that's why he called her. Kim edited the video to make it look like Taylor was cool with the song, mm -hmm. cool with everything, knew about the lyric, put her on blast, and then Taylor came back and said, no, I didn't know about this. And then the full version came out. Turns out Taylor was correct all along. Okay. All right, so that was years ago. Fast forward to present day, and now Kim Taylor is still pissed about it. I mean... Clearly, she should be. I kind of get it, but like... And apparently in the Time article, she asked, she said, like, I still am owed an apology that I never got. Oh, please, Taylor. Come on! All right, I also want to talk about Taylor Swift. She also trashed... This her, She's kind of trashing a lot of people on this album, Melanie. Yeah, of course, that was the whole point. All right, what'd she say about Maddie Healy? Daddy, I love him. Mm. She said, but that wasn't to Daddy. That was to all of us. Okay. Basically, so um, Maddie Healy was on a podcast where the co-host, I guess, said some racist stuff. Mm -hmm. Not great. We don't like it. Um, Maddie Healy laughed. Everyone said, Taylor, get rid of this guy. Right. We hate him. And she said, stop bitching and moaning. Daddy, I love him and I don't care. Oh, so she's talking to y'all. I think so. So she's she's basically telling her Swifty Shut fans the fuck up. to stop being in her business. Yes. Oh. Hmm. I think so. Okay. We're not mad about it. You're We're still like, going to be in her business? Of course. Okay. <laughs> All right. Last piece of Taylor Swift-ism before we move on. Okay. She said something about her, her new man, Travis Kelsey. Daddy. The alchemy? The alchemy. Um, so apparently she said there was an article that came out that said that she's written two songs and that she had no plans of putting them out. Mm -hmm. Then she puts out this song called The Alchemy, which talks about football and touchdowns and how this guy wins the trophy but runs to her instead. Oh, clearly about Sounds a... Sounds like daddy, daddy. 
clearly about Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey, because we saw Super Bowl win. First place he ran to Taylor. The arms of Taylor Swift. He doesn't care about the trophy. Uh, he cares he... about her. Okay. That's nice, right? Any other any other tidbits from the album that normal people should care about? Oh, she cusses on this so much. Down Bad is the best song, and she just said fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. The whole the whole song. I swear to God, the she whole just song. trying to be like risque. You think? Like, no, it's, it's good. It's catchy. It's good. Okay. It's good. I don't know how catchy it is. It is. It's, it is. All right. Taylor Swift's Torture Poets Department. Thank you, Taylor. Available today, y'all, if you want to check it out. Moving on. Kaylin Clark. This is like a beef show, man. There were more feuds. Kaylin Clark and Antonio Brown and a little bit of an internet spat. I don't even know if I should say they're t- in the internet spat. Antonio Brown just out of nowhere seemingly just released like a litany of inappropriate messages about Caitlin Clark online. Are you surprised by this? He, he sent out a bunch of tweets about Caitlin, and it was just like inappropriate, unnecessary, and uncalled for. He took to social media. He called, he referred to her as the uh, cracker of the day. Oh, yeah, he ha- he does that. He gives out the award cracker for the day. Cracker. He just recently gave out a, a guy cracker of the day. Have you ever gotten the cracker of the day award, Mel? I'd like to be the cracker of the day. Oh, God. <laughs> He also uh, said that Caitlyn, and I I won't use the word he used, but he said she looks like Mel Gibson. Oh. Like, it's just inappropriate. Yeah. So Caitlyn Clark, in response, of course, she didn't even actually respond to Antonio Brown. She just blocked him. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that's the most appropriate way to go with somebody like that. I guess. I I don't know. I think, to be honest, this is going to sound not great, but, like, who cares? Like, he does this to a lot of people. Right. He called her a bitch. Like, it's not the worst word in the world. And, like... It's a pretty bad word. Uh, there, I think there could be worse words, Wild. I agree, but that's a pretty bad one. Uh, so do you think that the appropriate response in this situation is just ignore him? Ignore him, because now there's a whole story. We wouldn't have even probably noticed. If she didn't say anything about it. Yeah. That. And, like, what, what did he call... She said that she looks like she has a hairy... JJ. Yes. A lot of girls do because we're lazy and we don't shave. All right, Mel. I don't think the people needed to know that. All right. All right. I'm just telling you, it's not that big of a deal. All right. I would like to move on. I'm sorry. <laughs> you just made, I got to move on now. You start talking about things I don't want to talk about. Uh, Andy Cohen is not leaving Bravo. So reports right. surfaced earlier this week that Andy Cohen was essentially negotiating his exit package from Bravo. So that means him and the network were allegedly talking about his grand exit there were speculations that he was going to get this extremely hearty exit Lucrative. package. Lucrative. Uh-huh. Like, really, like, bringing in the dough to get out of here. But none of that's true. So a spokesperson for Bravo tells TMZ that there is absolutely no truth to the rumors that Andy is negotiating his exit. Which is a little bit, like, you could believe that he would have been exiting. So when those reports came out, I think it was great for Bravo to kind of jump up and be like, no, this is actually not happening because of all of the drama that's been surrounding Andy Cohen that you would, one would be a little inclined to believe that he would. Are you kidding me? He is literally in a like beef right now with two Real Housewives, Brandy Glanville and Leah McSweeney, who have both accused him of different things. Sorry, I forgot. Oh, well, I didn't. (laughs) This is why you listen to TMZ podcast people, because we let y'all know. Um, (laughs) So he's in the mix of this, like a bunch of allegations. There are a lot of just different accusations about his character, character and allegedly inappropriate and shady behaviors. Yes. Um. But Bravo is saying that none of that is true. He is not leaving the network, which I think makes sense, at least for Bravo, because he's been such a staple at Bravo for a long time. Yeah, they, if they, they, we saw what happened to The Bachelor when they kicked off Chris Harrison. Mm-hmm. Even if he did do all this stuff, they're probably going to have to be like, sorry, he's got to stay. I mean, the stuff is pretty bad, though. So Brandy accused him of inviting her to watch him hook up with another Bravo personality over FaceTime. Like, hey, you want to watch me hook up with this other Bravo celebrity via FaceTime? And then Leah McSweeney claimed that Bravo just uh, thrived in, like, a super toxic environment. And, of course, Andy Cohen would have been a part of that environment. So the, the accusations are pretty uh, pretty spicy. Are they? I mean, they're, I think they're a little spicy. I mean, I'm such a bad person. I don't know. Like, if I was like, hey, okay, maybe I wouldn't do that. But, like... It was just a request, and she said no. 
Yeah, but then you had like the Leah McSweeney claim who says things like a toxic work environment. Well, a toxic but workplace work in- isn't toxic. There's it wasn't just a toxic Sad. work environment. Leah claimed that she was being pressured by folks at Bravo, other Bravo stars, Andy Cohen included, to do things like drink alcohol. Okay. Uh, you get what I'm saying? That's and indulge not great. in other oh drugs, other you know substance use behaviors that she was simply wasn't okay with. And these are all Leah McSweeney's claims. Okay. Um, so you get what I'm saying? That's I think the first that, one that I'm like, mm. Yeah, but, so the claims but, are pretty valid. But I think that the network, in this case, has essentially decided just to stand by their man. They have to. They have They have to. There's no way they lose Sandy Cohen and Bravo goes to hell. You think so? Oh, for sure. Can't they just bring in another... N- what, look what happened with The Bachelor! Yeah. It's gone downhill. Okay. And this, he's like, this is the whole network. Yeah, because who's going to host all the reunion shows? And uh, what about Watch What Happens Live? Oh. And he... Right. Saying, Points. Sorry. Points. Sorry, Leah. <sighs> Moving on. <laughs> Neo thinks you should be able to marry as many people as you want. So, Melanie. Yes. You got Neo out yesterday. Walking hand in hand with two of his girlfriends. Two girlfriends. Yes. Um, I luckily got a tip on this, and the person that tipped me off was like, he's walking around this uh, store holding hands with two ladies. And I was like, I know exactly what to ask. <laughs> Trent, shout out Trent uh, at TMZ Hip Hop. We worked this question over together. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, he. I asked him if he like would you know take to, to Washington, D.C., because I didn't know if you knew this. I looked it up. Polygamy is not legal. I mean, I can't imagine they can tell you who and who not to date, but you cannot get married to multiple people. Yes. One person only. Yes, Mel. We we all knew that. Oh, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> what about the Mormons? Uh, you can only be legally married to one person at oh, a time. Oh, got for, it. I think for like tax reasons and other things. Oh. I mean, I'm sure there's some other reasons, but that's a big one. Well, he said he's not taking to Washington. He doesn't care, but he's going to do whatever he wants. All right. So you asked him, do, should people be able to marry more than one woman mm-hmm. or man, have a multiple person marriage? Okay. And here's what he said. As an advocate of dating multiple women at once, being married before, what are your thoughts on legalizing um, polygamy? Legalizing polygamy? I don't know who's legal. It's illegal. You can't get married, but you can obviously have more than one girlfriend. Uh, I feel like in the realm of love and romance, you should let people do whatever the hell they want to do. Yeah? You can't see how it's hurting anybody. Exactly. Mm. Uh, I guess I was wrong about people not knowing that that was illegal. Yeah, hello. I thought everybody knew that you cannot marry more than one person. I just think we thought of the Mormon people and thought, like, they do it so... Can I ask, do you know who his uh, girlfriends are? In that? No, but I did ask them at the end um, if they would want to get married to Neo and also have more than one woman involved in the marriage. You know what would have been a great question? Tell me. If you asked the women that he was with if they would be open to having multiple husbands and if Neo would allow them to have multiple You know that's a well. no. I know, but that would have been because like, <laughs> <"Yeah." laughs> you know? he's walking around with two women on his on his yeah. arms, and it's like, well, what about when Tuesdays when he's unavailable? Can they walk around with two guys on their arms? Like, <laughs> Bring in a, I guess. I go to you go to equality stops there. Yeah, well, women don't have equal pay, so I guess it's not going to work out for us. I'm sorry. Look at Caitlin Clark. Look at Caitlin Clark. I'm sad. All right, Mel, what are you going to do with the rest of your day? Um, I'm going to listen to the Tortured Poets Department all day long. Okay, well, for the rest of you guys, Melanie is also the host of our TMZ Swift T podcast. So that is all things, all Taylor Swift. So if you want more Taylor news today, you're going to be deep diving into all the shady, the really shady things that Taylor said in this Tortured Poet Department's album. So that episode drops later today. So yeah. Check out Melanie on the TMZ Swift T podcast. Plug your podcast, Melanie. Why should they listen? Uh, you should listen because we're going to gab, we're going to gossip, and we're going to give you the real swift tea, baby. We're going to break it down. We're going to talk about it. And we're going to rile you up because I feel riled up. Okay. Well, that'll do it for us, yo. <laughs> Thanks a lot for joining me, Mel. Thanks. Bye. Bye.